Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sports Point. My name is Frankie Bright. Thanks so much for being here on another Wednesday morning. So much to talk about, as always. Great week to be a Wisconsin sports fan. We'll get into every little detail that entails. But joining me here on the show, as always, Liam Stass, Brody Kupski. How are we doing this week? Well, it's a little warmer today. Um, Not on Saturday, though. Yeah, it was it's a cold gonna, day, Brody. We'll it was talk about very, it. very cold on Saturday, but uh, it's supposed to warm up next week, I believe. It's so. supposed to rain all of next That's week. That's the whole thing. Well, yeah. I was going to bring my motorcycle out. Ah. It's supposed to rain. Jerry Kramer jersey on for Brody Kupski. Love it. Very solid. Draft week here for the NFL. We'll talk about that, too. We'll do a quick plug. Join us Thursday and Friday night for the Sports Point Draft live show. We'll be doing live uh, reactions and analysis to rounds one, two, and three. Join us here. Uh, I believe it is 6.30 on Thursday and 5.30 on Friday. Myself will be here. Brody will be here. Liam might be here a couple nights. Jacob might be here a couple nights. We'll see what happens, but uh, it's going to be a fun time. So join us then. But guys, uh, with that out of the way, we should just start the show. Let's just get into things. Crowning champions. We're going to highlight one thing around the sports world. I'll start us off. How about Dame Lillard? 35 points. 35 points in the first half. He's now the second person in playoffs to get up. And he's on that list twice, by the way. Mm -hmm. The top five. He's he's number two and three. That's crazy. Which is wild. Well, this is the most uh, points in the first half uh, from a playoff game since Kevin Durant did it in 2019. Um, with 36, with by the way, only one more point. Yeah, so it was really cl- If you just got something more, you know. But you can't ask for more than 35 points. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but just doing a lot to pick up the slack left by Giannis not being out there. Uh, probably for a couple games now. We don't know how many games he's going to miss officially. Um, but kind of crazy he had zero points in the second half. Kind of weird how that all yeah. worked out. Well, they also didn't play him at all. Right. Like, they, they were just, and I, why do you do that to a person? Let him drop 60 in a playoff game. Do like, it. what's it going to hurt? It's going to pop off. Yeah. I mean, that was game one in Milwaukee. Game two will be in Milwaukee as well. We'll get into that with our NBA segment a little bit later. But just wanted to highlight Dame Lillard for his fantastic performance in round one, game one of the playoffs. Uh, Liam, I love this pick from you. Yeah, I know we were going to talk about it later, but mm-hmm. I really wanted to mention her. Uh, Ashley Zagowski for setting the UWSP softball record for most saves in a season, and there are still 13 games left. Bonkers. And she just got one today, too. Did they're she play, actually? They're playing today against oh Platteville, like, so right now. So so she got a save now. today? Yeah, she She's got at 10. 10. The new yeah. UWSP record is now 10 it's saves. It's growing. On the season. That's amazing. I'm glad Why? that we're here to witness that. Also, honorable mention of Bobby Portis. Shout out, Bobby yeah. Portis. Yeah, PP. Sixth man guys. of the year. True. Yeah. Um, no, Ashley is insane. It's We're watching history live. And to be here on campus throughout that is very cool. Uh, so like that one from Liam. Like this one, too, from Brody. Two uh, home kids here. Bradley Comer, uh, UWSP third baseman. Uh, this past weekend in four games, he had eight hits, five home runs, 11 RBIs, and eight runs. Uh, against UW Platteville in their uh, four-game series this past weekend, which we covered. We'll get into that. Um, he had a couple great defensive plays at third base along with that. So have yourself a weekend, big guy. I they mean, killed him. They went down 6-0 in game four and came back and won a 15-7. And, like, the next inning they scored, like, scored eight, eight runs. Eight. <laughs> Speaking like, of which, wonderful job on the broadcast last weekend. Oh, thank you, oh, thank Liam. You very, very uh, we covered job. our first baseball weekend here on campus. It was a ton of fun. Day one was pretty chilly. Day two was much better. Covered all four games. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into it because I know Brody's going to cover it here in a second. Uh, but thank you, Liam. Uh, if you guys didn't watch it, they're still live. Not live anymore, but still on our channel if you want to go check them out, watch them back. Um, still tinkering around with the broadcast kind of style of it and uh, the look of it. So uh, let us know what you liked time. about it, what you didn't like about it. So Keaton yeah. Waller made a fantastic graphic. Uh, that I love the, the the scoreboard and everything. So shout out to it Keaton looked Waller. nice. Shout it out to Keaton nice. Waller. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, sitting on set. So this is a good segue. So we'll take a look inside. Does you know how to just, can he change it to 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 Jacob Cam? Jacob Cam. Jacob Cam. Jacob, future sports producer here, at Four Pointer Studios there. Thank you for running our show here today in the in the fishbowl on the tech side of things. Keaton gets the day off, kind of. He's just watching us from the studio. So, uh, no, great day, great weekend for baseball. Uh, and that'll wrap it up for Crowning Champions. Now over to Three Point Tri Campus Roundup. We will uh, take deeper dives into some campus sports. And as always, Point Brewery sponsors this segment with their Point Premium Soda. Vanilla Cream is this month's flavor. Uh, here you go, gentlemen. Now, I forgot to put these... Mm-hmm. In it's really the not fr- that warm. Well, no. Well, maybe pop it open first. But I forgot to put these in the fridge, so they're more room temperature than not. 
They're okay? Yeah. Solid. Look at that. They're never bad. Never bad. I'm going to take this home and drink it later. I had a, what was it, 47 gram of sugar brisk iced tea right before this, and I don't want to explode. You let him have that, Keaton? He, Keaton let me have that. Yeah, no, so... He played no part, he said. <laughs> um, but this is delicious. Thank you so much for your product. We love your product. Thank you for sponsoring this segment of the show and uh, Further Pointer Studios Endeavors, which will be, I think, revealed very soon. Uh, but anyway, three-point try campus roundup. I'll start things off with WSP Softball. Just talked about Ashley Zagowski a little bit, but they are 24-3 and now on the season after today's win. Uh, was this win a conference game? Yep, UW Platteville got it four and one now in the <laughs> YA. So, so Platteville just got dumped on this entire yes, weekend by uh, wow. UWSP. It was awesome. Four and zero oh in the y- four and one, excuse me, in the YA. Insane. They've continued their dominant season. Uh, recently, this past weekend, they uh, swept lacrosse in Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, game one, a uh, score of three to one and four to three in game two. Uh, we just talked about Ashley a little bit. We talked about her numerous times here on the show. Um, she had a couple saves, obviously, this week, which was insane. Set that new record. She also earned the win in game two. So she also, this is a cool fact, leads the country in saves. It's awesome. Yeah. This is national That's recognition awesome. for Ashley Zygowski here at Point. Love to see what she's doing. Ten saves now on the season. What's the national record? For That's a great saves? question. Brody Cups, he's going to look that one up, I think. Yeah, he's maybe. got it. I can get it. At least type uh, it on his keyboard, Annie. <laughs> Sure is. Uh, I believe it might be senior week next weekend for softball. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, I think it is. I think is that's what Tim said. Next so, weekend. Uh, yeah. Nice. Congratulations to softball as we look for this uh, save uh, record. But nonetheless, I think it was previously eight here on campus, and yes. now it's ten. So with 12 games left in the season, she's just going to keep pounding those away. You know, I can't wait to see it. Do we got it, Brody? Uh, pitching. Crossing my fingers. Hopefully it's here. 14 in a season. 14. That's totally attainable. It's doable. That, that is totally 12 attainable. 12 games, she needs four more. And in a career, this is up to 2020 or 2021. So okay, this is rather recent. It could have changed. But, right. I mean, the career saves is 32 set by Katie Klein of UW Lacrosse between 2015 and 2018. Shout out the YX. So, uh, there you go. Definitely possible. I can see it. You Go got for this, it. Yeah. Why not? We Go believe for it. in you. And then I'll do it for softball. Liam got something else. Uh, well, women's lacrosse coming back to that because unfortunately there's just not a lot of sports happening right now. Right, and I yeah. refuse to talk about track and field. <laughs> um, they pick up their first win, their first Ooh. ever win in the history of this program. So that's awesome. Congratulations to them. They got a win over UW Stout, thirteen to six. Yes, that was straight at yes, Reese Kupski. That is both a Reese Kupski mention and my infamous laugh. But yeah, buddy, what happened? <laughs> what happened, oh, buddy? Oh my great goodness! Song. What happened? Uh, Marissa Van Dyke with six goals. That's wild. Mm-hmm. She leads the pointers scoring overall with 37 goals on the She's season. She's killing it. Uh, Courtney Lysing had five goals. Emily Griege with six saves. Shout out Emily Griege, who was both. It was at the same time our women's ice hockey goalie. Oh, so. really? Yes. I did not know oh, that. So a lot of you know, hockey players. They either play. They can play both lacrosse yeah. and hockey. I know, like, really not that different. From I mean, each other. Northland's mm-hmm. men's lacrosse team has Victor Wenberg as their goalie. That's awesome. Yeah. Ah, so he gets pummeled and everything, man. Speaking oh. of which, Northland is here to stay. They figured it out. Woo! Um, so we hopefully won't lose our auto bid for the NCAA Thank you for delivering the pointers another NCAA auto bid. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. That is. Whoa. Wow, Frank. All right. Whoa. Whoa. Speaking Let's of which, I'm going to call her there. That's all I got. Thank you, cross. Liam. And now let's finally get to baseball that uh, we were at this past weekend. Oh, I just want to say, Ashley Zygoski is still a sophomore, so she has yeah, a dude. couple more years to dominate. So She's going down in history. Shout out to Ashley. Mm-hmm. Baseball, uh, lost two versus Oshkosh last Thursday. Got moved from Wednesday due to rain. Um, but then swept Platteville Saturday through Sunday. Yes, um, in the first Oshkosh game, an 8-3 loss. Jacob Boos, 2-3, for three, 2 RBIs, 1 walk. In the second game against Oshkosh, 7-4 uh, loss. Trent Van Ness, 3-4, three, four, 3 RBIs, 2 runs. One walk, and then starting Saturday's games, uh, Platteville in the first game, one they won or the Pointers won ten to eight. Anthony Tomzak two for four, three RBIs, three runs. I believe a walk in there too. Uh, Platteville in the second game lost eleven to eight against our boys. Jacob Boost two for four, two runs, one walk. 
And then on Sunday's games, in the, uh, so the third game of the series, a 13-3 victory in seven innings. Um, Trent Van Ness, three for four, four RBIs, two runs, one home run. Bradley Comer had two home runs in that game. And that one from Trent Van Ness, Grand Slam, I believe. Yes. Yeah, insane. Yes. Uh, and then that second game on Sunday, a 15-8 victory for the Pointers. Bradley Comer, three for four, five RBIs, two runs, and two home runs in that game. Trent Van Ness also had two home runs. Yeah. So just a lot of great performances on the weekend. Um, it was really fun covering the games. I mean, this is the first time that I've covered a baseball game since I've been here at Stevens Point and doing this. So I like, feel like this is the first time either studio has really even Yeah, honestly, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. since I've been here, we have not did it. Um, so I was very grateful to do it. Um, like you said, it was very cold on Saturday. So <laughs> a lot of guys running around and um, trying to stay warm. I mean, the fans were staying warm. The fans were. packed in for four games this past weekend and had fun doing it. It's like 450 people there in the cold, which was really cool. But, uh, I mean, just as a studio, I'm kind of – I wish we got into spring sports a little sooner. Um, yeah. But, I mean, there's so much going on here yeah. with Player Studios, so trying to find what we can and can't do takes some time. But I'm glad we got out yeah, there. Yeah, no doubt about that. So they're currently 19-9 and on the season, currently second in the WIAC at 11-5 after a couple of big L's on Sunday for lacrosse. So – that's going to be a huge series this upcoming weekend. But I want to highlight Bradley Comer, fantastic weekend, like mm-hmm. I highlighted earlier. Trent Van Ness and Anthony Tomczak staying hot. Uh, they're both great leaders on that team and hitting the ball well, playing well defensively. Uh, in their pitching, too, Sydney Ferry closing two games on Saturday and getting two saves out of it. He's been red hot there. And, um, and to round out here, the schedule this upcoming week, they have one game on Tuesday against Lawrence University at home, but by the time this comes out, it'll be done. Uh, they have one game on Thursday at the University of Dubuque. Oh, they're in, traveling far yeah, for that one. in mm-hmm. Iowa there. Uh, and then they got two doubleheaders this upcoming weekend, uh, one on Saturday and one on Sunday at home versus lacrosse. I think Sunday might be senior day for the team, so that's awesome. And then they have a game next Tuesday at home versus Ripon College. Yeah, rounding things out, not much more to go. But where things stand, they're looking hot, looking to stay hot uh, here in the future. And that'll do it for the Three Point Tri Campus Roundup. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Let's get into our NFL updates. It's NFL Draft Week, my favorite week of the year. I couldn't be more pumped. It is in Detroit. Round one will be on Thursday, rounds two and three on Friday, rounds four through seven on Saturday. A lot of dreams about to come true for a lot of young college kids. Can't wait to see what happens. And like I said, we'll be streaming the first two nights here on Sports Point, uh, Thursday and Friday. Stay tuned. There'll be a poster out, to I believe Monday already. We'll have it out, um, and we'll keep you posted. So with that, guys, I do want to talk about the Packers just a tad. This one little Uh-oh. thing with the Bucks game ton of Packers there in Milwaukee. Jordan Love, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Josh Myers, Sean Ryan, what have you. They're all there supporting our boys. So loving to see that, uh, I don't know, cohesion from these Wisconsin sports. Yeah, They're I, all immensely supportive of each other. Yes. I was going to say, like, Brandon Woodruff was at the game, too. And, like, you know, Christian Yelich is big on going to those games. David Bakhtiari for years was always at Bucks games. Oh, so, I miss yeah, him. It, it I don't think he plays football again. That'd be really? Don't think he gets signed yeah. anywhere? Yeah. Why not? He'll get signed by the Jets just for nostalgia. <laughs> just for just for just the, not why. I think the, the Bengals would be stupid not to. Why? Because who got, have he they had? had nothing else. For His years knees are gone. At tackle, he didn't play for almost two Joe years. Joe Burrow's career has been shortened because they don't have an offensive but line. I would not expect us going down this conversation. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> then oh, they'll rely on somebody whose knee is completely destroyed. When he's got worse knees than me, buddy, that means it's a problem. <laughs> That's saying something, Liam. Right. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, they lost Jonah Williams, and albeit a ton of first-round talent at tackle, I don't see it as a bad thing to go sign David Bakhtiar. But he's not, he doesn't have it anymore. He's not the same player he was two but years ago. But when he's out there, like, he's still Pro Bowl. But when he's out there every other, like, three games, he didn't see, play it all thing. last that's year. That's the thing. He, as a player, has to understand, yes, I'm talented, but, yes, I come with a big risk. I won't get a lot of money. He needs to accept that fact. And if he can, I think he plays football again. Easy. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, Cincinnati yeah. Bengals, go get David Bakhtiari. <laughs> He's calling a shot. Joe Burrow might take oh, you to a Super Lord. Bowl again if you do. All right. Good With Lord. that, let's do Mock Draft 2.0 here on Sports Point before our uh, draft weekend. Uh, we'll start this one. This one's going to be a little bit different, rather. 
Uh, instead of doing a first-round mock draft, we're going to do a seven-round Packers draft. Not a seven-round NFL draft. We'd be here for ever. Um, so we'll do the Packers. They have 11 picks, one in the first, two in the second, two in the third, fourth, fifth, two in the sixth, two in the seventh, I believe. Um, 11 picks. And Brian Gutekunst today, this morning, said he wouldn't mind getting out of the draft with 13 to 14. So he's mm -hmm. planning to move back, um, which I think – this talent pool can get really cool. Do you think he trades out of the first round? I wouldn't mind it. I've never said that before, but this year I feel that way. See, I would, but I feel like Kool-Aid McKinstry won't fall out of the second round. He might. He could. But you'd have, to, you'd have to trade back into like 33 through 37 range to get him for sure if he, if he does fall. But uh, trading back into those uh, later 30s, Having three in the second, picking up like a, I don't know, fourth and a sixth in conjunction with that would be great. Um, I just really like the talent around the second and third rounds. Even in the fourth round, there's some good guys. You and that's get. where the Packers thrive, too. They thrive yeah. in the second round. Third round, uh, not so much. Third round is pretty bad. For but fourth round. round and after that, I mean, they thrive pretty well. So yeah, it, guys. it's everything but the third round. We are going to do a seven-round mock draft for the Green Bay Packers. Um and here we go. Who wants to start with pick 25? Okay, we can do, do trades it. this one. So if somebody wants to trade back, I got to see who's on the board here. It's simming to pick 25 right you know now. What? I'm going to go first. Well, the thing, I want to go first. I, I think the thing is, too, with this, it might be different on all our screens. So. Yes. It will be a little different, but I will. we're going to go off my board. Mm -hmm. And um, the trade I'm being offered right now. Okay. Cincinnati Bengals, we we're just talking about them, wants pick 25 and 126. So first and fourth, they'll give us 49, 80, and 97 in the next year's second. So we trade out of the first round. You trade out of the first round, but you're trading to 49 in the second. That's kind of late. That, see, I'm going to disagree with that. Because, you want to stay. Yeah, I, I, I think I want to stay. Genuinely, what I want to see happen is I want Cooper DeJean or Kool-Aid mm -hmm. And I feel like both of those guys will go – I mean, they're going to go later in the first round, but they're best definitely going to go in the first round, and can I really don't I, want to miss out on I that. Can I tell you something? What's up? Cooper DeGene is there. Yeah, he's there for me, at too. pick 25. At, yeah, that's why I said later in the first round. Right, like, right. So you want to... I feel like if we pass on that... I don't know how that, Cooper DeGene just fell. What? I don't know how Cooper DeGene well, just fell. Because he was he's injured, got a, but, yeah, And he does have a little bit of weakness. Yep, yep. He does have a little bit of weakness. I say get him. Yeah. I mean, if he wants to I play said. with Van Ness, there... He does. Uh, he does. He does want he to does. play with Van Ness. First round pick, Cooper DeJean, coming to the Green Bay Packers. Love that. Let's go. Great job, Liam. I'm hiring you as general manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. you should pay me $400 million a year. I'm worth, get paid that much. I'm worth it. I'm worth I, it. See, now that's confidence right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm worth no, it. No, uh, okay, so we're simming around two. Pick 41, Brody Kupski. Pick 41. Uh, Rams are offering you pick 52. About 10 picks later, and pick 83 in the third. So you get another third rounder. Packers aren't good in the third round, notoriously. See, I just don't like trading back. Like, I'm not okay. big on, I'm not big on trades because it might hurt, it might benefit, and it's hard to tell, like, right, right away. So <clears throat> We will reject this trade. Yeah, I'm not big on trades. Yeah. Reject this trade. Xavier Worthy has fall, fallen. Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. Jacob there in the fishbowl really likes that man. TJ Tampa, corner from Iowa State. Running back Trey Benson. Go Troy so you Franklin. want to keep on the defense train. Or there's corner Max Melton as well. Brother of Bo, Bo Melton. Melton. Oh, yeah. that's. So who do you like? I, you I want to keep on it. the defense train? I would train? like it, but we did just get a safety slash, slash corner. I was going to say, see, we, we kind of need offensive line. Yeah, that's and what I'm like saying. Like a bigger offensive line early. I don't, I don't know if there's a guy now besides Patrick Paul. At least on my board here. Say We're Beebe. taking tackle or guard? Cooper Beebe is probably going to go around in the fourth round. This right. this list is a little bit different. Yeah. So, um, Well, which one are we going for? Are we going for tackle, guard, or center? What's our need right need now? We need tackle or right guard the most, but a lot of these guys are going to play inside well, I was anyway. going to say, if like both they can play tackle and guard it, it's yeah. huge. Because well, um, the Packers really do favor that flexibility on they the They do. On the line. They do. Let's take a, a good look here at Patrick I don't know. Paul. Patrick Paul might not be a bad choice right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, six seven. That's pretty huge. big. That's a yeah. big guy. Like that nine point six seven RAS. Packers like that. I don't see why you don't go with Patrick Paul. I mean, he's. So we're going Patrick Paul, offensive lineman at pick forty one. I don't hate it. Yeah, I. I mean, I'm just big on offensive line because that's 
kind of what we need. Like yeah. we'll do it. Offensive tackle from Houston, Patrick Paul, pick forty-one. We're gonna take uh, I think pick fifty-eight. Yes, pick fifty-eight. Pick fifty-eight coming next. A lot of good players coming off the board. Edrin Cooper still there. Ennis Rakestraw still there. He just went. Edrin Cooper, please be there. Edrin Cooper. Oh, he just went. Yeah, I was gonna say. Shoot. Okay. Dang. Tragic. Okay, at pick 58, the Lions have offered pick 61. We trade back three. We give them 169, our fifth round pick, and they give us a third next year. I don't want to lose our fifth yeah, round. Uh, um, I'm not going to take that one. Now, this one from New England has us trading back to the third round. I don't want that with yeah. just the, how that trade's going to work. Um, we're re- reject them both, and we're going to pick. Cameron Kitchens on the board, safety. Packers might like him. I don't. Um, we need linebackers, though, don't we? We do need linebackers, yeah. and there's a guy I see on this list who won't be there. Um, this guy, Braden Fisk, he won't be there either. Uh, this this board's just a little bit um, yeah. strange. What about – is Cedric Gray still on yours? No. Okay. No, but uh, Junior Colson is. I would take Junior Colson at 58. I would also take Kamari Lasseter corner maybe at 58 or defensive lineman Chris Jenkins. He's uh, arguably the best run-stopping uh, defense tackle in this draft. So what do we favor more? Because I will go Junior Colson or I will go Chris Jenkins. Well, what do we need more? Defensive tackle or uh, linebacker? I, I would say linebacker. I would say linebacker. We, we have say, a ton yeah. of defensive and tackles. Junior so Colson's like, a great player. Yeah. All right, we'll go Junior Colson, linebacker. Because he only stands to improve. From Michigan. I mean, that's what his report says. He really only stands to improve at the NFL level. So, yeah. Like, yeah, Junior Colson is a starting backer. He can start in Jeff Halfley's defense, no problem. There is your second round. We'll head over to the third as this continues to sim through. A lot of good players still left on the board. Marshawn, Marshawn Nealand would be so good to get. I We're going all the way to down to 88 right now. Though, yeah, right? going to 88. A couple good running backs as well. I think Will Shipley just got taken. That sucks. Um, would have liked him. He'd be a great change of pace back yeah. for the Packers. Um, yeah, so Liam, obviously you get the spearhead this one. We will talk about it as always to make sure we all agree. Mm. Now. Marshawn Nealon is there, but we do have a trade coming in from the Eagles. Let's trade. Pick 120 for pick 88 and pick 219 and next year third. I don't like it. Oh from, from us to them? Yeah, we get them. We give them a third and a sixth for a fourth and next year third. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's awful. No, um, that's terrible. Atlanta's offering us two fours for pick 88, and we do pick three picks later in third. Honestly, I, so what are we giving up? We're just giving up 88, right? We're giving up 88 for two fours. And? That's it. That's it. 109 and 115, which isn't that bad. Honestly, yeah, I, I would I would say go for that trade. We'll make something interesting here for you. Packers will still pick in the third round, and now we have two more fourth round picks to work with down to 91. Uh, Minnesota wants a trade. Pick 108, another fourth rounder, and a next year fourth. Nah, yeah. we're staying in the third. I like it. Uh, linebacker Trevin Wallace is there. Roger Rosengarden. Oh, my God. Kira Matagaji, that guy should have been gone a while ago. Uh, I'm going to give you the pack. The players I think might be here for real. Mm -hmm. Devondre Sweat, defensive tackle. Braylon Allen, running back from Wisconsin. And offensive guard Dominic Pooney. Normally, I would be all in for the Braylon Allen, except Mm -hmm. for the fact we just signed Josh Jacobson, and we're pretty solid at our running back. Both of them, though. (laughs) One more that I really like. DTD, uh, Daydream Taylor Demerson, safety Texas Tech. Could be really good next to Xavier McKinney. I would prefer the safety and the defense because we have, have Cooper DeGene. I, I know, I know that Braylon Allen's still there, and I know that he really balled out at Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we did just sign Josh Jacobson. We still have AJ Dillon, and we have uh, his name is Skip. Manuel Wilson. Manuel Wilson, younger guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have the depth that we need. We've got mm-hmm. a pretty good tandem okay. with AJ Dillon and Josh Jacobson. Okay, so we're for passing that reason, on Braylon Allen. That's for sure. Yes, I'm mean, say we're gonna pass on Braylon Allen. So what was the safety you said? Uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson and offensive guard Dominic Pooney would be great because we have our offensive tackle Patrick <sighs> Paul might have been a little bit of a reach but I don't, I don't know think that's too bad well we did just say we already have a safety at Cooper Zishan right so because he's probably not going to start at corner yeah. yeah you know what unless they need him to which he can he right. has the flexibility but you know what I think we're going to go with the the offensive offensive the line Dominic Pooney uh, played offense tackle and guard at Kansas, so this is really a Packers pick. They like their versatility on the offensive line. This is a guy who's going to play guard at the NFL level. Dominic Pooney at 91. I really like that pick. Well done, Liam. We're going to head into the fourth round where we have three picks, but pause. Do you, do you guys want to try to trade into the third round here? DTD is still there. 
Braylon Allen is still there at pick 99. Well, this is Brody's call now. Do you want to try to trade up for the following three players? Braylon Allen, DTD, um, or Jaden Hicks, safety from Washington State. Probably would be gone at this point, too, anyway. Um, still a great safety. Plays kind of more of a linebacker, box robber role, really. Um, see, I, I, I can would, offer it, see what sticks. See, I love Braylon Allen, mm-hmm. and I think, like, he's a great player. Mm-hmm. And kind of like Liam said, we have a lot of running backs right now, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't make sense to get another running back. But you could develop him to kind of be a great player. But I think DTD, if you can get him, okay. I don't see why not. I will offer a trade to the L.A. Rams. What are we offering, though? What, like, what yeah, are we giving? Probably out? the two fours we picked, or maybe one four and a fifth. What do you think? Because I can offer, let's say, 115, fourth round pick, and 169 from the fifth. Fifth round for pick 99. See if it works. See if they take it. Uh, no. yeah. They rejected it. Mm. What's, uh, what's Keaton's opinion about this? Yeah, Keaton says yes or no. Yes. All right. Yes, yeah, you're obviously. Here. Yeah. Um, I can go 115, 126, or I can go one pick back with Washington, offer them the same trade. See what happens. Yeah, why not yeah, go I with that? And if they reject it, Washington really. rejected it. So let's go back to the Rams and offer them two fours. 115, 126. I think we're we starting, but, but we're kind of on that territory now of what, kind of stretching. Are, yeah, if, if what we give up is what we're giving up better than what we're going to get. In right, return. right. Okay. Yep. I, I dig it. A lot of good guys in the fourth round. Let's resume. They're still there. Still there. We'll pick at 109. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Two picks away. Okay, okay, okay. Is it still there? Both of them. DTD and Braylon Allen dropped. Oh, so 109. Man. Eagles are offering us 120 and 161. No, we can't. I think we can't. got to pick no. one of them. All right. Pack, we pick. Who's got a coin? I don't have a coin. Uh, but we pick seven picks later. Or you, six picks later. You have a coin? No, let me pull it up. Brody's here. got it. Brody's got it. Braylon Allen heads, DTD tails. All right. Make sure this is how they actually did it in the war room. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Brian Gutekunst. It's, well, ta- it's, <laughs> it's tails. DTD. Yep. I like it. Beats off that secondary. Like, you know how when they, fine, you know when they have yeah. the camera in the war room? Imagine they get down to this pick, and it's just Brian Gutekunst going, <laughs> Tails, all right. <laughs> we get DTD at 109. Braylon Allen just went at 112, assumed. To um, who, by the way? Okay. To who? Who did Braylon Allen go to? To the Raiders. <laughs> the prison team. Poor guy. That Poor sucks. guy is right. Jaguars are offering us 116, one pick back, and pick 12. They're trying to move up one pick. They want somebody, and we get a higher pick than our seventh. We yeah, take it. Take we it. take yeah, it. Yeah, we take that. Yep. Okay, my pick. Jaden Hicks just went. That's why they jumped us. <laughs> That's why they jumped us. Because uh, they don't wanted to. safety <laughs> anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. Jalen Wright's sitting at 120. Like, he's a second-round, third-round running back. That's insane. Um, the Packers should take, like, three offensive linemen. Yeah, but and do I we want to— see wanna... Mason McCormick here, but he did tear his ACL senior year. Packers won't like that. What do we think about— Tanner Bordellini. Yeah. He's more like a six-round guy. Okay, but, but on this list, obviously, honestly, we're going to rank different. And, I don't know. And, and, and on the day, it's going to be different. But here's the thing. Tanner Bordellini had one – Had I think he had the – well, he's a center, right? Yes. Yeah, he had the best uh, combine out of centers. Yeah. So, and if you – like, we kind of struggled with Josh Myers. We that is true. Kind of with Josh Myers. Tanner Bordellini – hang on. Plus, Let I feel like some... he's the type of guy who, if you asked him to and gave him the training, he could actually shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I really feel like yeah. he's that I think, type of guy. Because I've seen him play in high school. Not football, basketball. But oh, really? Like, yeah. He played yeah. my school. Um, I think he would be, like, especially like how he looked in high school, he could be a tackle. This you'd look guy, at him, he'd be a tackle. Really? Yeah. He's, a he, was just a bi- he was just a big well, guy in high school. he's a big guy. School. He's like 6'7", 300 yeah. no, pounds. No, I know. No, I know. Um, projection, round six, four. Four. And he's here at round four. I, I'd say go for it. I really I do. I don't see why not. Packers take center 
from Wisconsin, Tanner Porter, Bordellini, and they beef up that offensive line. I think we already taken two. That's our three. I don't think we need any more. Uh, focus we on have defense, a tackle. Though. We have a guard. We have a center. Let's focus on defense. I agree. Because we don't need receivers. We no. really don't need them we right don't. now. We don't. Pick 126, our third, fourth rounder. Um, let's see. We could go running back like Ray Davis or slot corner Jerry and Jones to compete with Keyshawn Nixon. Well, we don't um, need defensive Ted. We don't need DTs, right? We could yeah. take one we, just to help the rotation maybe yeah. a little bit. Uh, Matt Gonclaves is there. That's who I meant to say towards ACL. It wasn't uh, McCormick. It was Gonclaves. Uh, Zach Zinner, he's a little bit later down. Um, there is a guy called uh, Katana Ladabo. Safety Oregon State's been flying up draft boards as a safety. We don't really need I safety was anymore. Say, if he could switch a corner, uh, maybe. But yeah, yeah. Um, hang like on. His, I his... think we could go running back Ray Davis from Kentucky. Running back? Yeah, I still think we need to change the pace because Dylan and Jacobs are still pretty big. Um, they don't yeah, have the it, like Emmanuel Wilson's speed. kind of the guy to mm-hmm. shift around. Um, Hang on, let me look at Ray Davis here. If Ray Davis is a guy <laughs> that's kind of like an here. Aaron Jones, where he can go out, get receptions. You are gonna have to fly Ray, through baseball. Like when Ray we get Davis, you are gonna have to fly through baseball. I don't have class. I don't know why you were so worried. About. I got yeah, class. We I got think class. Ray Davis could be the guy here. Is gonna be more of like you're receiving, uh, maybe a three down back. Um, yeah. And let's look at his, his combine. Uh, 40 yard dash, four five two. Um, what are his measurables? He might—he's five eight two eleven, so he's a smaller guy. Um, got some speed to him. I like him at running back. You don't have to take him. Cam Hart at corner might be another who's, good who's, guy. Whose who's guy is it? Who, who, which I think it's is it? Frankie. Yeah, I think it's, so. It's your no, pick. It's, it's actually, it's you. your pick. Oh, it's my pick. Yeah. Oh. yeah, let me look at Dylan Lobb as well. You're gonna put this in my hands. I mean, I think you go running back or you take a corner. Yeah. Have we taken a corner yet? Cooper DeGene's the only kind of guy, guy we that have. could go over Yeah, I feel like one. we need – because if we don't take a running back, we're still fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. who's there at corner right now? Uh, Jerry and Jones and Cam Hart are the two that I'm seeing that I really like uh, at corner. So – Either or, you think? Yes. Frankie. All right, Frankie, say. you take the one that you like more. Okay, okay, hang on here. Flip a coin, I got. Yeah. I, gotta say, I have a preference. I just have to, to confirm my my preference. <laughs> Your suspicions. Yes, my suspicions. Um, hang on. Let's take a look here. Yeah. Um, let me look. It's it's kind of more of a Packers pick in terms of um, his measurables. Oh my God, where did he go? Let me look him up. I lost him. Here he is. Yeah, he's 6'3", 202. He's got an RAS score, 9+. plus. Um, it just makes sense. Can be more of an outside corner for the Packers, which they kind of need more competition at. They take Cam Hart in round four at 126. Does he fit into Jeff Hathley's new scheme, though? He hope, hopefully does. Yeah, that's... Hopefully does. All right. Moving on <clears throat> into round five, pick 169. We've got like 30 more picks to go through here. Let's speed run the, 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 the latter rounds. How many picks do we have? We have two in the sixth, two in the seventh, and this one, five picks left. Oh, my We're going to fly through them. I can't believe Jalen Wright's still on this board. There he goes, finally. Um, where else could we go? We could go corner again. We could go defensive tackle. We could go receiver. We could go running back. We have a linebacker already, right? We do have Junior Colson. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that was a great pick. If this guy stays, no, he's gone. I was going to say. Isaac Orendo at running back would <laughs> have been great. Oh, dude, former Badger. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, pick 169. Gabe Hall is there, defensive tackle. Uh, Eric All, tight end, if they want to go third tight end. Yeah, uh, Christian that. Boyd's all right. I'm sorry, but Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave. He's the guy. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we could uh, kind of go with another linebacker, kind of how we did with, like you said, Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, like, <sighs> we always need linebacker depth. Yeah. Got a good edge here, Muhammad Kamara. A little bit small, but great production in college. Packers love to draft edge. So, if sure. you're cool with that, I mean, I'm cool with sure, that. Sure, whatever. This is just based on prospects I like. I mean, like there's it, other edge players look, around. The but. thing about the draft, they, they, could be, they could look good on this day, mm-hmm. but then like five years down the line, they could be out of the league completely. On their couch, yeah. So, it's, 
it's hard to grade drafting. That's kind of why, like, drafts are kind of dumb when people try to rank yeah. them. Like, okay, yeah. it could be good now, but, like, five years of, from now. Yeah. Like, Let's do it. Mohamed Kamara, edge, 169 in the fifth round. I like it. We're going to head into the sixth. This pick relies on myself. I forgot what even number one. 202. Oh, my gosh. I mean, who's got a, a freaking something to draw? Or, you know, it's going to take, like, 20 more picks to sit here and watch this go through. I, I'm liking this draft so far, though. Uh, we'll, we'll quickly get through the last two rounds. Um, I would say I, I'm going to come in, into the, the weekend with the first round mock. I always love to look at my predictions based on what actually happens uh, on the night so we can grade my own, see how many get correct. All right, 202. Here we go. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? A couple good guys. Another safety if you guys want. Sion uh, Vaki is there. Nehemiah Pritchett at corner. Um, Let's see the gears turning in his head right now. Okay, I see a guy. I'm S- taking him. The Cameron Richardson, <laughs> corner from Mississippi State, is ranked much higher now. You might see him go in the fifth round. We're here uh, in the middle of the sixth. So I'm going to take Cameron Richardson. We double down on corner for Jeff Halfley. Sure thing. Really like it. Uh, ooh, there's a good center on this board still, too. He's, uh, if he's there at 212, we might should, maybe should take him. Yeah, but Tanner Bordellini. Right. We already took three linemen. Do we need to take four? No. I mean, there's also still free agency. Yeah, yeah exactly. And there's a couple um, corners, defensive tackles here still on the board. I'm still looking just to see if there's anyone else I really want to like shout out to you here. I mean, some people will be special teams deaf too. If we need yeah. It. Okay, Liam. Mm. I'm gonna give you a couple guys here. Okay. Drake Nugent, offensive center from Michigan, got a great outlook. Um, Charles Turner, offensive center. He's still pretty good. And that's really who I like oh, we, here. We, we, but Tanner McLaughlin had a good combine at tight end. But I mean, but yeah, but that falls back out of the – we've already taken three offensive linemen. That's true. Juwan Briggs, even if not have a good RAS, they're not going to want to take him. Uh, kind of getting down into what's left. You yeah, know? kind of it's taking like, flyers now. <laughs> So, ah, screw it. We can take another tight end. You want to? Yeah, why not? Put him on special teams. Yeah, exactly. I think I want to go with this guy. Let me make sure. The tight end? Yeah, Tanner okay. McLaughlin. I think he had like an insane catch, if I'm thinking of the right guy, at the combine where he caught one ball and didn't know there was another one coming. No, it was a different kid. Um,. Let me see his RAS. RAS 7.66. They're not going to take him. I like this guy, too. What does RAS mean, by the way? It's like their athletic score. Mm. <sighs> yeah, we but... We might find more value at offensive line, honestly. But... Yeah. Okay, I mean... Drake Nugent would be good. And we'd ha- Anybody we'd like- else besides a center? Because we've already got a center that we took earlier. Yeah, we we've, do. We still have Josh Myers in the squad. We do have Tanner Bordellini Nathan in there. Nathan Thomas. I don't like love. Guard and tackle, really. I mean, There's not tackle. really anybody else in this kind of threshold. Yeah. Anybody that you maybe think we can like move to potentially play well, here different. There you go. Satoa Lumea from Utah. And? This guy probably shouldn't be here. But he is, so we take him. That's this is an offensive guard who probably would have gone like a round or two earlier. So we're, t- we're taking him. Okay. We have to. Offensive guard from Utah. Any Satoa, reason he, Lumea, fell? Any like reason he fell in the in that, do you think? Or? I think it might be a different draft board is why he's still there. He might have also fallen uh, the same way Brandon Allen did. So uh, we're back on the board. 219 in round six. Two later on in round seven. Drake Newt is still there <laughs> for another <laughs> offensive lineman if we want. Nice. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I wish Katano Adaba was still there. He's not going to be there around six anyway. Um, these are all flyers. I think we got to take the guy who we know we like, Drake Nugent. Sure. Keep some competition going at guard. He might not stay at center. We'll take him there. Yeah, I was going to say, more picks he can now. move to guard. I don't see why not. Yep, two more picks now in the seventh round. 245, 255. We'd probably go running back because we haven't yet. You know what I mean? Sure. You also haven't gotten wide receiver, though. We don't need one, though. Do we need a running back? Probably more than we need a wide receiver. Uh, why, do we, why do you feel like we need a running back, genuinely? 
change of pace. There's nobody on that who is just like a pure, you know, guy who jukes people yeah, out. Like yeah, but if it's a one-two punch. Yeah, and Emmanuel Wilson. I mean, if it's a one-two punch, plus Emmanuel Wilson. I mean, I don't know. In the seventh round, I like Rashawn Ali from Marshall. Sure. 259 ranked on this board. We'll take him at 245. Liam, for you, we're going to take a wide receiver. <laughs> Why? For you. For just for just me? For, just for you just because for you're me. wanting a receiver. I never said I wanted a receiver. All right, we're not taking it. Oh, we didn't have another pick. Well, we traded 255. That's I right. forgot. Yeah. yeah. All right, we get out of there with 12 picks. We took Cooper DeGene, Patrick Paul, Junior Colson, Dominic Pooney, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, Tanner Bordelina, Cam Hart, Muhammad Kamara, Takami Richardson, Satoa Lumea, Drake Nugent, and Rashawn Ali. This is a really good draft. Yeah. We went heavy offensive line. These guys probably could like change the order of all these guys, and we might still get them all. I'm not positive on that. Don't yeah. check me this uh, later this weekend. But I really like Cam Hart at corner. I think he can compete with like you know. I can't think of it. Eric Stokes, Carrington Valentine. I don't. I really don't mind starting Carrington Valentine with how aggressive he was in the seventh round. Yeah, but Stokes competition is at a position. Yeah, done. and we've got a ton of competition at uh, offensive line, interior offensive line especially, and then safety. Cooper DeGene, Dadrian Taylor, Demerson. Those guys are gonna ball out. I like it. Great mock draft, gentlemen. I support this. Um, you guys will see this on your screen, obviously, as we went through it. Twelve picks. Brian Gutekunst hopefully is happy with that. That's going to close it out for NFL. Thank you for sticking with us. MLB time. Brody, Good lot Lord. to get through. Uh, get not, a quick. Uh, not overly we'll too much. But, okay, so the Brewers are currently 14-6 and six on the season. They lost a series versus the Padres, their first series loss of the 2024 season. Um, Padres game one. Uh, they lost 7-3, despite starting very well early. Um, just one bad inning by Joe Ross uh, led oh, to the Brewers' really, loss. Really bad inning. <laughs> it was very awful. Um, in game two, which I attended last Tuesday, 6-3 oh, um, to three loss. It was a rough start really early. Uh, Wade Miley was just getting shelled, and like he had, hardly had an out, and he gave up like four runs before that. Um, but they battled back to make it a close game. Lots of missed opportunities, but it was a fun experience getting back to Miller. I mean, American Family Field. Oh. Part. Um, it was a really fun time. It was raining, but also, like, the dome was closed. And just, like, it was a, wasn't a big crowd because it's a Tuesday game. Right. But it was big enough where, you know, you had that fan presence. So it was fun to get back. Uh, in game three of the Padres series, the Brewers win one to nothing. Blake Perkins with the go-ahead hit late in the game. Um, they sealed it in the ninth, uh, and then they go out to St. Louis. They swept the St. Louis Cardinals Friday through Saturday uh, in Game One of the Cardinals series, uh, two to one victory in ten innings. William Contreras with the go ahead go ahead hit. Uh, my sister was actually at that game, there we go. Um, so she had a fun time down in St. Louis. Uh, in Game Two of the Cardinals series, a twelve to five victory. William Contreras three for six, one RBI, two runs. Just an all-around great team effort by the Brewers. A couple home runs hit by uh, Bryce Strang and Jackson Churio during that game. So that's awesome. And in Game Three of the Cardinals series on Sunday, uh, two to all win. Uh, Colin Rea five innings, five hits, three walks, three Ks, zero runs. So he had a pretty good performance. Um, some notes, D.L. Hall lands on the 15-day IL with a knee sprain, and Wade Miley also landed on the 15-day IL with left elbow inflammation. Uh, the Brewers brought up lefty Jared Canning and uh, righty Tobias Myers from AAA. Uh, I'm feeling really good about how this team is currently playing. Yeah. Uh, Contreras is always staying hot. Terang is, like, really, really hot right now. I'm so glad he's playing really well. Uh, and just they're playing like a team that's on a mission. Uh Upcoming, they have a four-game series versus the Padres on the road starting Monday. So when we're recording this, I believe they play in like a couple hours after this. Uh, they have a three-game series at home versus the Yankees uh, starting Friday. I will be at the Friday He's Yankees back. game. Um, I'm getting a Sal Freelich hockey jersey. Whoa, that's, that's awesome. really cool. I'm insanely jealous it's of It's awesome. So wait, they're like giving those out to everyone who's there? No, just a certain ticket that you get to buy. Um, oh, okay. And like I was just like, I really want to get that, and I have the time. I'm going to go get one. <laughs> uh, so, it's yes, I will not be here on Friday for the draft. Sorry, Frankie. Ah, it's all right. Uh, they also have a three-game series at home versus the Rays starting next Monday. Um, so, good luck to the Brewers. They should be staying hot. 
The Astros, meanwhile, are ice cold starting the season. They, uh, they are currently fifth in the AL West. That's even behind the Oakland Athletics, who won't have a home starting next year. Money ball, baby. It's true. At this is just depressing. The uh, Astros are seven and sixteen. Uh, they have lost seven of the last ten games, and uh, want to highlight one of their players. Jesus, oh, Jose Abreu is Little awful, light. absolutely <laughs> awful, and he. he I believe he signed in the offseason last year or the year before. They need He's that. batting 0.67. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's, that's um, I mean, or er, 0.067, I should say. That's really awful. Try to fix um, four <laughs> hits on the season, zero home runs when he's, uh, <laughs> when he's a home run hitter. Frank, you just did the corner go like, like yeah, well, that's terrible. Oh. Dang. Oh, geez. You got to maybe get better. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe be he better. He was like an MVP candidate, I believe. Did he win an MVP? I want to say. This he... is like Francisco Lindor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I want to say he won an MVP. Which, yeah, by the he way... did actually win an MVP. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's just having like a Christian Yelich kind of time. But he did kind of is, actually. Disappears. I don't. Comes back, now he's he, good again. He might have had an injury here and there, but still, for a guy that they signed in the offseason, actually last year, um, he is looking awful, and he's getting bashed on for it. He'll bring it back. But a team that's looking hot, besides the Brewers, the Yankees, h- hate to say it, um, they're currently second in the AL East at 15-8, and eight, only because I actually typed this way, way beforehand. They lost today. As we're recording this, to the Oakland Athletics. Yeah. Aaron Boone got ejected. Great stuff, guys. Um, <laughs> How did he get ejected? I believe, actually, they he must have said something to the ump like super early. And he was staying quiet. And I think a fan well, like yelled out something at the ump. The ump turned, looked at Boone, and just tossed him because he thought Boone <laughs> said something. Got to help your friend. Got to help your that team. That was gotta hilarious. Help hey, he said this. <laughs> yeah. Get um, out of here. But, uh, yeah, the Yankees are looking hot. They're led by Juan Soto, who they just traded for in the offseason, and yep. Anthony Rizzo. Um, things are really starting to click for them after a rough season last year. I guess rough season for Yankee standards. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to look hot, and they're going to play the Brewers this upcoming weekend. That will be fun to watch. Um, other news, Shohei Otani uh, breaks the record for the most MLB home runs hit by a Japanese-born player. Really he hit cool. the uh, his uh, record, 176 home run this past weekend. Uh, the home run was off, or it was a two-run home run off uh, former Brewer Adrian Hauser, who's now in the Mets. Um, he, bra- he broke uh, Hideki Matsui's record, uh, former Yankee. Uh, so congrats to him. And uh, division leaders currently, the AL East is led by the Orioles, only because the Yankees lost today uh, at 14-7. and seven. The Guardians are leading the AL Central 16 16- and six, they're looking really good right now. Uh, the AL West is led by the Rangers, twelve and eleven. Uh, they're they either won't... really bad or all really good. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to go <laughs> with they're all pretty bad. It's early, um, so it could definitely change in yeah. a month from now. Yeah. Uh, the NL East is led by the Braves at fourteen and six. The NL Central led by your Milwaukee Brewers at fourteen and six, and the NL West led by the Dodgers at thirteen and eleven. But I mean, they played a bit more games. The, yeah, the, for sure. The Padres aren't too far behind, and Diamondbacks are kind of there too. There you go. Go Diamondbacks. I don't even know what you just said. They said go Diamondbacks. There it go is. The All right, I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Brody, for the MLB updates. Brewers still killing it. Love to see it. Uh, NBA update time. Bucks are in the playoffs. We talked about it. Game one was in Milwaukee. Lots of Packers in attendance. As we did mention, the Bucks won over the Pacers, one hundred nine to ninety four. Awesome to see, especially without uh, Giannis. Well, especially because like everybody was saying, oh yeah, the Pacers are going to win this one. Right, right, exactly. Lillard, great game, but other great performances from Lopez Portis. Want to highlight Chris Middleton, I believe, with like 32, 28 points on the game. I think uh, we talked about him a bit this season, just not being the same player based on his injuries and such. But now that he's back, he's really adding, adding a new dimension to this team that I think it missed most of the season. Um, they're 100 percent at the free throw line. Hard to do sometimes. Uh, really cool to see that happen for them. Big performance without Giannis, obviously. Uh, but that, I think, is one of the greatest aspects of it because they may have to do it a few more times. They proved they can do it to not only themselves but to everyone who's doubted and said the Pacers were going to win. So huge congratulations to the Bucks on game one. Next game, I believe, is Tuesday. I believe. Tuesday, tomorrow night. 
So the day before this, it's the time you see this. Hopefully yes. they're two. Tuesday at seven thirty or two and zero. Oh, sorry, yeah. Tuesday seven thirty. Uh, other playoff updates around the league as uh, just who won game one so far in round one. Cavaliers took down the Magic. Timberwolves defeated the Suns. Shout out KD. Uh, Knicks took over the 76ers. Nuggets beat the Lakers. Sorry, uh, LeBron. He's the, he's, the, he's the goat. Oh, so that's. I'm seeing like Keaton over there, like shaking his head. LeBron's the goat. <laughs> Who agrees? I don't think I don't think Keaton agrees. Jacob is LeBron the goat. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Jacob's right. Thumbs, down? thumbs down. Love it. Ah. Think of it this way. Next segment. All right. It's tragic. Right. tragic. I'll stop right there. Tragic. Uh, Celtics defeated the Heat in blowout fashion. Gross. No uh, Butler for that one, right? Uh, yeah, he's hurt. Yeah, that's MCL what I thought. MCL or something. Yeah, Clippers took over the Mavericks. Sorry, Alex Proctor. Um, I don't even know if that's his favorite team. He just talked about them as maybe his favorite it team. Is. It yeah, is. It cool. is. Cool. Uh, and then Thunder took down the Pelicans. Pelicans made it close, though. Yeah, yeah they did. They really close one. Did. They did. So uh, shout out Thunder, Kelvin, my former roommate. Sorry, I just won't cheer for the Thunder. Um, anything else you guys want to add about uh, the Bucks' first win there? Or Bobby Portis is Bobby Portis. the best DP? six man, and he should absolutely win six man of the I year. I would love to just go beer for beer with him one night. Bobby Portis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that night? That one night. That'd be so fun. You'd probably end up in the middle of nowhere, like a, like the hangover. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Call in uh, Doc Rivers. I lost Bobby Portis. I don't know where he went. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for NBA. Quick uh, look at the playoff uh, outlook uh, with the NHL. Liam. Well, playoff hockey is finally upon us. Uh, before we get into matchups, there's something I wanted to mention. Okay. Uh, all rounds, one through championship, there are four rounds. Uh, each one of those is best of seven. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that. on average... Frank, because I don't know if you knew this. On average, the Stanley Cup playoffs take about a month and a half to two months to get done yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, it's a long yeah. time. So basically they get one month of rest, and then it's right back into the season. That's actually like, crazy to think about. Yep. Yeah. In terms of like professional sports, because football's got you know five months yeah. off, six months, I don't know. NBA's got a good little chunk there too, even MLB. Yeah, baseball's off for like two or three months. Yeah. That's crazy. You only get a month. Yeah. You're playing hockey like every day of your life. I, I'm sure that they don't mind. You know. No, yeah, they probably love it. Hockey is amazing. They probably love it. Yeah. Well, to start things off in the East. It's the Battle of Florida. Florida versus Tampa Bay. Florida currently leads one game to none. Go Florida. Uh, you don't agree with that pick, do you, buddy? That's I don't like either team. So because Florida did do something super funny last year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they did something funny last year. Yes. They beat the Boston Bruins last year. It was really Speaking funny. Speaking of Boston, Boston <laughs> versus Toronto. Uh, they didn't win game one. Oh, Boston no, I know, did. I know. Sorry, <laughs> Brody. <laughs> Leads one game to none. Look, when, when I saw we had to play Boston, I'm like, yep, we're not winning. We're not going to the second round because we can't beat Boston. We haven't beat Boston in, I think, like two or three years. It's insane. Really? Yeah. Boston just has our number. I'm so sorry. Good job, Boston. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> New York Rangers versus Washington. The Rangers lead one game to none. Go Rangers. Uh, UW Badger alum is on that team. I can't remember their name. Condre right? Miller. Condre Miller. Thank you very much. Uh, Carolina versus New York Islanders. Uh, Carolina leads one game to none. It's funny because out of all of the teams there, guess how many of them have a Stanley Cup? Four. No, everybody except for Florida. That's funny. Yep. Yeah. Did you know that Carolina had a Stanley Cup? No. Yes, I did, actually. I did, and I didn't find that out until two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at that, and I'm like... It's not really you, your state you think of when you no, think... No, 2006. Sports. I was three years old when they won their Stanley wow, Cup. Wow, little Liam. Moving on. <laughs> In the West, uh, it's Dallas versus the defending champions. You can say that Vegas. all you want. They're not going to uh, win this They year. play the first game tonight, and they will. Go Stars. God. Joe Pavelski, shout out. Uh, Winnipeg versus Colorado. The Jets lead one game to none. I don't know if you watched that game. Insane. Really? Oh, yeah. Insane game. I mean, it was already after the first period, 3-3. Three to three. Wow. And then they, so not a goaltender's duel. And then no. it ended up... Seven to six. I mean, in the last like few minutes That's of the awesome. game, 
uh, Winnipeg was up like seven to four, and then Colorado started like storming back, and I'm like, this is going to go to <laughs> OT, isn't it? And then they somehow, with the empty net, scored a goal, and by then it was like, it was over. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's so funny. <laughs> it's a good game. So uh, there you go, Keaton. Down one game. Your team sucked, I guess. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, Vancouver versus Nashville. Sorry, Alex Proctor, but Sorry, the Canucks sir. are leading one game to none. I was also watching that last night with Good the buddy. Game. And, uh, Good game. Yeah, like right after Vancouver scored their second goal to tie it up, they scored one like 12 seconds later. Huh. And they went up ahead. Alex Proctor in shambles. And then like they scored an empty net goal to seal it away. My, fr- my friend from Tennessee, who I watch him with, he like immediately turned it off because he's like, I'm just tired. <laughs> uh, I'm tired. At this point, they're not going to well, win. It's the so first time I'm Nashville's done. been back in like eight years. It's the first time they've been back to the playoffs. Well, in I think so long. They were talking about last night. Like a lot of people said, Vancouver and Nashville were not going to make it. Yeah, like, well, I mean, make it to the playoffs because last year Vancouver was the worst team in the league. Yeah, and this year they were number one consistently. So good for them. I wish it wasn't against Nashville because I really want Nashville to at least go and win around. They were going. They. Played for a Stanley Cup and got absolutely cheesed out of a goal. By the way, that would have won them the cup. Like it was, like it the was bad. last season. Oh yeah, last season. Yeah, yeah. Go sit over the shoulder. We're not yeah. gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Edmonton versus L.A. Uh, they play their first game tonight. Uh, you know, go Kings. Go Kings. Go no. Kings. Go Kings. You go Kings. guys. Go Kings, Keaton. Go Kings. Go Kings. All right. <laughs> I also have a buddy that's a friend, be fr- uh, fan of the Kings. You'll so, uh, all be sorry. If they lose this round, I'm going to hold it over your head for the rest of your life. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to stand out of a box so I'm taller than you, and you can't. You can't, though. You're, like, short. <sighs> Tragic. I was going to say, this is, like, the third year in a row that uh, right Edmonton's played L.A., so. Yeah. And they won? Last yes. year. Last year. Hey, hey there we go. But, hey. Who did they lose to, though? On their, uh, I think that. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that. Oh, I can't. Uh, what's not coming Edmonton's to mind. winning the Stanley Cup. <laughs> For the first time in That'd like 30 years. Count on it. All right. That's all I got from the NHL. Well, I'll thank see you, you again in like four months. When it's finally <laughs> thank you over very one. much, Liam. <laughs> Uh, we should just come back for a summer episode when this is finally <laughs> said and done. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode, though. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's been a fun one. Stay tuned for the NFL Draft live stream this coming weekend, Thursday and Friday, early weekend, kind of a long weekend stream. So can't wait for it. It's going to be a ton of fun. Thank you, Brody and Liam, for joining me here today. As always, shout-out to Jacob in the fishbowl, running our stream wave. Hi to Jacob, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I have been Frankie Bright here at SportsPoint. We will see you next week.